This is the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast. We have assembled the world's finest sports and trivia dorks to prove once and for all that we are just as bad at this as we were at sports. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Bench Warmers Trivia Podcast, sports trivia for those of us who rode the pine. I'm your host, David, and today's game will feature a game between the Bench Warmer team of Mason and Josh versus Bench Warmer Scott and equipment manager for our Patreon team, Matt Takimoto. Uh, why don't we start with Matt? Why don't you uh, remind us? I know you've been on a couple of times before, you've hosted already, but since you're back to play, why don't you remind us who you are, your team allegiances, and uh, you know anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, thanks for having me back, y'all. Um, yeah, my name is Matt. I live in the Bay Area. Uh, I teach the fifth grade. Uh, school starts next week. What? Um, which is, yeah, we start early, end early. So it, it'll feel really good in May when we're done before Memorial Day, but it doesn't feel so great in, in August when we're starting now. Um, yeah. And um, so that's kind of gearing up for that. Been, you know drinking i got i got the bourbon tonight um <laughs> doing a little high west tonight and nice, uh nice. yeah ready for ready for some good stuff um team allegiances san francisco giants um golden state warriors kind of the niners but i have fallen off of nfl a little bit um and i went to uh oregon and cal for college so um high expectations and no expectations yeah, that should have been our other team name. <laughs> right. Perfect. All right, Scott, how are you doing? And why don't you share your team name? I'm doing pretty well. Um, I got my cast removed on Friday. Oh, nice. So uh, the road to recovery from my, my broken ankle starts. Uh, a little physical therapy coming up over the next couple of weeks. And hopefully I'm back on my feet in some capacity by, you know, the end of the month. Um, it's nice. Though. It was a nice early birthday present for us, David. You know, getting the cast off because That's right. I wasn't I wasn't supposed to get it off for another three weeks. So I'm I'm ahead of the schedule um, that was set. So that's that's nice to know. So feeling good. And with that, to get to our team name. So when Matt was born, uh, the year he was born, the name Matt was the most popular name uh, for boys at the time. And so he had a lot to deal with as a kid. Um, you know, there were like five Matts in his class. And so Matt went by Taco for reasons that hopefully he'll be able to explain later but because of that i i because of that information that i found out a few minutes prior to recording i decided that we would just combine you know ourselves for our team name so we're going to be beefy taco all right and uh speaking of teachers that are probably scrambling to get ready for the classroom mason how are you this evening good um yeah i i feel like me in the exact same spot as matt because we start next week as well when we're recording this so yeah it's it's gonna be a, a mad dash to get things um, back in order, especially because my classroom is completely rearranged from when I left it because they clean and stuff. So my classroom is basically in reverse of the way that it normally looks. So I have to reorder everything, which is fun. <laughs> It'd be a nice way to to continue uh, with that while, I'm, while PD is going on and all that. So that's going to be fun. Josh, why don't you share your team name and tell us how you're doing this evening? Yeah, I'm doing all right. I don't know. Things have been good. We just got back in town from a weekend up in Duluth, Minnesota. Uh, it was gorgeous. Spent some time uh, on the shorelines of uh lake superior took a little boat cruise that was pretty cool and nice yeah i just had a had a real nice time up with uh, the wife's family and yeah, got back uh not too long ago so we'll see how well my brain works after after a weekend away so and whenever mason and i team up we almost always have something mathematical since we both have math degrees and are math nerds and all that goodness so today we will be, because it is true, exponentially bad at this. I love it. It, it seems appropriate. Beefy tacos against exponentially bad at this. I'm glad right. it was beefy tacos and not like grimy tacos. I wasn't sure where oh, Scott oh. was going with that. You can you, you can get a lot of those around here too. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes Perfect. you need a grimy taco if it's like 1 a.m. and you've had like two too many cocktails. Okay, oh. that's fair. That's fair. Sometimes that's all that's available. Yeah, you take what you can get. Oh, yeah. Uh, all right. So we have exponentially bad at this versus beefy taco, a matchup for the ages. Let's uh, let's get going and kick it over to Dan for the rules. The game will consist of four quarters of play, each with different trivia style. 
The styles of quarters one through three will change from show to show, and I will explain them as we go along. Like any good sporting event, we will have a halftime show after the second quarter with entertainment questions. And in the fourth quarter, our teams will wager from their points accumulated to see who are today's clipboard captains to be honored like the true bench warmers they are. All right, let's get this game underway. All right, today's first quarter will be Flop, Turn, and River. Flop, Turn, and River. For this quarter, there will be three questions consisting of five clues. The first three clues will be given before the teams decide if they want to check in with their guests. The last two clues will be given one at a time, with teams deciding if they want to check in with their guests after each subsequent clue. If a correct answer is checked in after the first three clues, the team will receive 50 points. After the fourth clue, 30. And after the fifth clue, 20. So this flop turn and river is kind of a page out of Eric Ede's book, but with a slight variation. It's not named Josh's, though. Josh's face. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> For each question, I this is the alma mater edition. I'm going to give you three sports personalities, and I want you to tell me where they went to school. And I think that might be worse than Eads. It could one. be. It could be. <laughs> and if you need if you need help, I will give you a slightly more obvious person at the turn. And if you still need help, I'll give you a slightly more obvious person for the river. So it, question, that's how the game works. That's the format. Thanks for explaining exactly. that, David. <laughs> well, we'll keep going. It, if you need help, we'll play the game how it's been played. <laughs> I was just trying to make sure you knew how it mapped to the alma mater edition. All right, here we go. I, next time, I'm not helping you at all. Okay, the flop. <laughs> Chuck Pagano, Malcolm Floyd, Jay Novacek. We're going to need the turn. All right, Beefy Taco has decided to take the turn. That sounds so great. All right. <laughs> <laughs> and we're exponentially bad at this. You guys can talk for a few minutes, but don't say too much. That's what that's how it works, by the way. <laughs> in case you care to know. I, just, I can't put together these three. Like I have vague pieces for each of them, but it's just not. Okay. Nothing, yeah. If you don't think you've got anything real solid to at least even nope. float my way, let's just uh, take another one. Okay. All right. So the turn is Theo Ratliff. This is a notable person. I should know this person. Well, he's I mean, a horseshoes champion. He's he's a little <laughs> before your time. Where okay. most athletes are a little before. I mean, your time. Jay Novacek was before gonna, my I was time, but say. I know who that is. Well, I, I mean, are are you that into NBA prior to you being around? So I'm okay if we just want to say right away, take another one, unless yeah, you've got I'd, something to to throw my way. This last one's a name, at least I know. Yeah, should be, should be no, the according giveaway. to the way the round works. Yeah, take a, we'll we'll take another. All right, exponentially bad at this. Have decided to take another clue, and BV Taco. I I I'm pretty sure I have a uh, geographical location. Yeah, which is narrowing it down a little bit. I don't. Um, I don't hate what you put in the chat, but I'm. It's just on a vibes thing, and I have nothing concrete to go on it. Yeah, yeah. I let's just they you know. We don't need to take a risk this early, right? Yeah. So we might as well. Well, uh, we'll do the river, David. Our river clue: Buffalo Bills quarterback Josh Allen. <laughs> okay, there we go. Okay, uh, okay I think we I, can I check in, right? Yeah, yeah, we're good. <laughs> All right, we'll check right. in. Exponentially bad at this has decided to check in, and Beefy Taco, what is your decision? All right, so I was not correct geographically at all. No, no, <laughs> very, that's, very that's much that's the okay. opposite. It's, I mean, it's. We had roughly the middle of the country, right? <laughs> Very specific. Yeah, that's that's a big yeah. area. <laughs> roughly um, the middle. Josh Allen defensive end is Kentucky, and yeah. Theo Ratliff did not go to Kentucky. No. So that, yeah, immediately has to be Wyoming. So that's what we're going to check in with, David. All right. And exponentially bad at this? Yeah, apparently Theo Ratliff went to Wyoming. Did not know that. And obviously I didn't know that. Uh, Pagano, Floyd, and Novacek went there either because otherwise we would have checked in earlier. So but yeah, we also checked in with Wyoming. Both teams will be receiving points. Uh, yeah, Theo Ratliff played for, I don't know, 15 years or something. He made the All-Star yeah. team at least once. So he wasn't he wasn't a complete complete journeyman with no success. 
Uh, he was a solid role player for a lot right, of teams. And, right, absolutely. You know. And and you missed perhaps when Matt jokingly said that Theo Ratliff was a horseshoe champion because I was thinking, went to Wyoming. It's not such a far-fetched <laughs> thing. <right? laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, it could be. All right. <sighs> Question number two. What school am I? All right, I won't explain to you how it works this time. Here we go, the flop. Carl Lewis, Tom Landry, and Jim Nance. This is one of those weird facts that, you know. Oh, but that it doesn't help me with the second part. Right, of that. right. I see where. Does, <laughs> like that was that the lean, nugget. That, that was that was the nugget that was floating in there. Oh. That I. It, it does that wasn't... lean you toward? Yeah, unfortunately, that's that that's that nugget. I thought I thought there was a different nugget. That's the nugget. I mean, I'll I'll share what it is. It's not helpful. I'm not gonna share it now, but after we you know yeah. get through the answer, I'll tell you what He'll it was. Share his nuggets with you afterwards. You want another one, Josh? Yeah, I think so. All right. Uh, Exponentially bad at this has decided to take another clue and that leaves beefy tacos to decide what they're going to do. No, Uh, we're going to, we're going to take another clue. Yeah. We just didn't want them to talk it out. We just just didn't want them to seem like they were on to something. So the nugget, yeah, the nugget train, it was wrong. It it was not the correct nugget. nugget Well, in this case, I think the turn is going to help both teams quite a bit. The turn is case Keenum. Oh, Oh, yeah. 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 (laughs) Oh man, I thought that would be a give, uh, river clue, but okay. Yeah, no kidding. Well, it's definitely not a Theo Ratliff clue. That's, <laughs> that's true. Well, it's harder to find. It's harder to find yeah. Wyoming people than it is. Uh, that's cool. We're, we're that's checked cool. in. All right, Beefy Tacos has decided to check in. Exponentially bad at this. Yeah, this is Houston. Okay, is that sure. a check in? I mean, unless Josh has any objections. Well, I, I know, but should I share my nugget of the thing that I thought maybe sure. was about share a college? Your nugget. Uh, so my nugget was I, there was something with Carl Lewis, and I thought it was about where he went to college. It was no, it was that he was drafted into the NBA by the Chicago Bulls, but I don't think he played college basketball, so that didn't actually help. <laughs> that was my nugget. Nice. All right, and and Beefy Talkers, did you say your answer? No, no we, because we, we checked did not, in but first. We also checked oh, in. You know how this game works, David. <laughs> Can you tell me your answer now? <laughs> uh, yeah, we also said Houston. Perfect. Okay. The river clue was going to be Hakeem Olajuwon, but yes, I thought that would be even more of a giveaway than Case Keenum. All right. Sometimes it's difficult to gauge difficulty based on era, but here we go. Question number three, Jamie Moyer, Mark Cuban, Mike Woodson. We're going to take another clue. David. <laughs> I was quick. <laughs> We're both like, we have no clue. So yeah. <laughs> All right. So uh, Beefy Taco has decided to take another clue quite quickly, actually, and exponentially bad at this. You guys can talk it out or tell me what you're going to do. So let's let's All take right. another. All right. Exponentially bad at this has also decided to take another one. Our turn. Antoine Randall L. Oh. You're going to tell me uh, that there's more than one of those guys, and I have to tell you which one because I'm going <laughs> <laughs> to. Yes, there's two Antoine <laughs> Randall L's. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right, we'll check right in. Thought. Yeah, we'll check in. All right, exponentially bad at this has checked in. So, Beefy Tacos, the floor is yours. Yeah, Antoine Randall was the uh, the the one that took us from absolutely no clue to all of the clues. Uh, so we checked, we locked in with Indiana. Perfect. And exponentially bad at this. What you guys have? Yeah, funny enough, Scott. Actually, the name I was keying in on from those first three was Mike Woodson. Um, oh, I, I I knew he was. I knew he played in the Big Ten. I couldn't remember which school. And then when Antoine Randall came out, it was absolutely Indiana. It is absolutely Indiana. And the river clue was going to be Isaiah Thomas. Which one? Which one? (laughs) (laughs) The first one, the one who won the national championship in college. (laughs) The first one ever. All right. So after our flop turn and river, we have a tie score. Exponentially bad at this and beefy taco are both at 80 points. We wanted to let you know that we are on Patreon if you'd be interested in supporting us financially. Your contributions will be used to help us cover the costs that it takes to bring you the high-quality sports trivia that you have come to expect from us. There are also some great perks that come with the Patreon membership to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast, including bonus episodes and Benchwarmer swag. You can find us at patreon.com slash benchwarmerstp. Thanks. That will bring us to our second quarter, which will today be The Missing Link. 
The Missing Link. This quarter will consist of five questions with theme-linked answers. The teams will attempt to answer the questions and guess the theme. Each question is worth 20 points. If a team checks in first via chat to the host with the correct theme before the fifth question, they will earn 100 points. The other team can still earn 50 points with the correct theme guess. If neither team has checked in with the correct theme before the fifth question, each team can earn 50 points with the correct answer to the theme after the fifth question. Question number one of The Missing Link. Since the college football playoff started, who's the only coach that has won a championship for his undergraduate alma mater? Uh, we're going to check in. All right. Beefy Taco has decided to check in. Exponentially bad at this. Your, your turn to talk it out. Well... There's only been four, five schools to even win it since it right. started. And it's not Saban. Pretty sure it's not Devil Swinney or Urban Meyer. I don't know where Kirby Smart. I don't think Kirby Smart would be it. My first thought, it's Coach O, but I'm having some pause because he only played at LSU for a year. So I don't know how, speci- how if I'm being nitpicky here because he did not graduate from, from LSU. I know that for a fact. I mean, I think technically you don't have to graduate to have it be an alma that's mater, I, but that's usually people refer to it as your alma mater when you've graduated from there. Right. That's what's giving me a little bit of hesitation. But I mean, so, I know that I, I don't I hope this is not a trick, but I'm 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 almost certain that it would have to be Ed Ogeron. If not, I think the only other option is Kirby Smart, because I think we've ruled right. out the others. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's not the others. So, so it's going to be one of those two. So the question is, if if that's going to be the case, I mean, would it surprise me if a guy named Kirby Smart went to Georgia? A guy named Kirby? That sounds, you know, I don't know. Not Except Kirby Puckett, obviously. That's, that's, that's a, Minnesota, a Minnesota legend name. What do you well, mean? The, yeah, it's, well, yeah. And I, I'm sure that uh, Chicago would like to claim him as, as theirs since that's where he, yeah. I don't know for sure. Like I said, I think technically you, you can be, a place can be called your alma mater even if you didn't graduate. I don't know for certain on that, but I yeah, think that's, that's what's worrying. Case. That's what's worrying me. That's the only Just the way you wrote about the undergraduate alma mater, just that, that makes me think that they graduated from. Okay, so. I think. Do we want to go smart then on the chance he graduated from Georgia? Because I don't know. Maybe. Man, I'm going to kick myself if it's Coach O and we do go against it. Oh, man. Uh, if you if you want to go Coach O, I just, I'm not sure how, how David has. This might be one of those games where very rarely is there question about David's question writing. But uh, we've already had two instances of uh, which, which. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm just. I, I don't want you to kick yourself if if it's Coach O. I've, and I feel like I you would think, know if he went to Georgia. You but... would think we would have maybe heard something about that, but maybe there was stuff out about it. And I just don't. I haven't paid that close of attention to college football because I'm very rarely interested in the finals because it's all the same teams typically. Yeah. But... I guess I'm leaning Coach O just because I know he went to LSU. Then let's go with it. And then if, even if it was for one year and he left and transferred, I know he went to Northwestern well, state. His son played there afterwards. Like I, you know, or it would McNeese be, it'll, or be interesting, but... it'll be interesting if it turns out that there may be our two possible answers and then he'll have to give uh, more points. Maybe. I don't know. I say go with All it. Right. All right. We're going to go with Ed Ogeron. Check that in. Okay. And beefy taco. Yeah, we actually went with somebody that never came up, which makes me very concerned about our answer now that I think about it. Yeah, same. Um, um, but we uh, checked in with Ryan Day at Ohio State. So here's the interesting thing. So first of all, Ryan Day is definitely wrong because they have not won a championship under Ryan Day, although he did go to Ohio State. So so uh, no points for that. The answer that I was looking for is actually Kirby Smart. He did go to Georgia. He played at Georgia. He graduated from Georgia. However, I'm going to give points for Ed Orgeron because I did not realize that he was at LSU before he transferred. I knew he graduated from Northwestern State. That was slightly sloppy. Most of the time, people refer to their alma mater as the place from which you receive a degree. However, on a technicality, I just went to look it up as you guys were debating this, and I did. I wanted to cut off your torture. 
uh, just so you knew that I was going to give you points either way. Apparently, people do sometimes refer to their alma mater as a place where they attended even if they didn't get a degree. So it's more conventional, more traditional to say it if you've got a degree. So I'm going to give points for Ed Orgeron. I cannot give it for Ryan Day. Fair? But, but the answer for the missing link is Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart. That's correct. Right. <laughs> that is correct. And we got to make sure that we read I was that. I was about to clarify that anyway. Right. right. The correct okay. answer as the, as the missing link goes is Kirby Smart. Yes. Okay. Question number two. For which NBA team did all of the following Hall of Famers play during their careers? Patrick Ewing, David Thompson, Sarushis Marshallonis, and Dennis Johnson. Okay. We're going to check in. All right. Exponentially bad at this has checked in. Beefy Taco, you guys can talk it out. No need. Uh, we're checking in with the Sonics. Okay. And exponentially bad at this. What did you have? Yeah, so I went it from the Ewing angle because I know he only played three teams, the Knicks, the Magic, and the Supersonics. And I'm pretty sure David Thompson predates the Magic even existing, like his entire career. So that only left the Supersonics. So that's what we checked in with. That is correct. And uh, Dennis Johnson, if anybody was the giveaway there, I mean, he won championships yeah. uh, or a championship with Seattle. So, yes, the correct answer is the Seattle Supersonics. And our missing link answers so far are Kirby Smart and the Seattle Supersonics. Question number three. First developed in Scotland, what is the term given for the oldest style of golf course generally built on sandy coastland that offers a firmer playing surface? We will check in. All right, Beefy Taco has decided to check in. Exponentially bad at this. It's your turn to talk it out. Pretty sure these are called links. That's what initially was coming to mind as he was talking about it. So, yeah, not sausage missing, links, but just links. Or missing More links. More food. Or missing links. Oh, it's a meta. The missing link is, is links. But yeah, all right, we'll check in links. All right. And Beefy Tacos, what'd you have? We also checked in with links. That is correct. Both teams will be receiving points. And now kicking myself that I didn't do the meta. All right. <laughs> question, question number four. Clearly I'm off today. Question number four. After being selected sixth in the 2005 NFL draft, he played in 11 seasons, mostly for the Cincinnati Bengals, and would later go on to become a TNA tag team champion. We're checked in. All right. Beefy Taco has checked in. So exponentially bad at this. You can talk it out. Future I'm pretty Davis, sure that this is... Uh... Adam Jones, check that in. Sure. Yeah, I'm fine with that. All right. And Beefy Taco, what did you have? Uh, we also checked in with Adam Jones. Both teams are receiving points. All right. So our theme blinked answers thus far are the Seattle Supersonics, Kirby Smart, Lynx, and Adam Pac-Man Jones. Question five. Who is the only player in the last 20 years to win most outstanding player of the men's NCAA tournament or of the men's final four? and go on to win at least two NBA titles. We're checked in. Beefy Taco has checked in. Exponentially bad at this. It's your turn to talk it out. I'm trying to think of things that might fit a theme, but... Right, that's... I'm trying to go through the men's Final Four most outstanding players, but nothing's come off the top of my head. I mean, this has to go a little ways back, obviously, for this to happen and two NBA titles in the last 20 years. So since 03... I think it's Mario Chalmers. Yeah, that would that would make sense <laughs> on multiple levels. Yes, yeah, uh, yeah. I would. I I thought this might have gone a ways back. I would not have thought about him first. Uh, I was. I didn't think of him from the basketball yeah, side of things. I, I figured. I figured based on that. Yeah. I was trying to think of more recognizable than you know the previous yeah. one. Yes. So we'll check in with Mario Chalmers. Okay. And Beefy Tacos, what did you have for an answer? I uh, I just. Yeah, yeah, we had this obviously very quickly. Uh, just watched him play earlier today in the big three, Mario Chalmers. That is correct. It is Mario Chalmers. Okay, and our theme linked answers are the Seattle Supersonics, Kirby Smart, Adam Pacman Jones, Lynx, and Mario Chalmers. One team has actually submitted after the second question, and I'm going to give the other team a chance to think about this. To think we about what they've done. We don't need <laughs> any more. Uh, okay. And, and All I right. and I had thought that they might have beat us to it even when you, Mason, were thinking yeah. Super Smash Bros. I, I think, yeah. But so I thought they were maybe already ahead of us, but since right. we were too specific and then Right, because Pac-Man obviously Pac -Man doesn't work for that. Didn't work. Um but the others pretty sure they all 
I think I you're right, think, but uh, think so. But I could no? be wrong. Uh, video no, games are not okay. my specialty. But why don't you tell I've, me? What I've you only think? played a few times. Okay, but that's why I was. Tell me, tell me what you think the answer is, and we'll. Oh, the answer is, is video, game, uh, video characters. game characters. Yes, I don't that will yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. That will work. We'll okay, Scott, why don't you break it? You want to break it down for us since you submitted? Uh, or, or, I'm or... not going to break it down because this was all my partner who okay. had the theme before a correct answer was even given in the round at all. Um, after we checked in with Ryan Day, he typed to me, oh, if it's Kirby, it could be video games. So wow. let's be on the lookout for that. So, yeah, Matt, that was all you. So, you know, talk your you-know-what. Yeah, and then, and then after that, we started uh... – kind of just brainstorming on the side what other video game characters might show up. And we um, grabbed Link and Mario and Pac-Man Jones before the questions even came up. So nice. thus the quick check-ins. You masoned. That's the, you <laughs> You try to figure out the answers for the theme right away. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Link is, uh, Link from is Z- Zelda. Right, from Zelda. Right. Exactly. So I don't think, Unless there's some sort of magic keys to get to get other people in Smash Brothers, I don't think that Link or or even Sonic is character. Link is himself. absolutely in Link Smash is Brothers. In Smash oh. Brothers. I, don't I don't think Pac Man is. I found a Pac Man in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate, but I don't know how you want to go about that. Is well, it's Sonic. Okay, okay here, I don't think Sonic is though, right? Here's okay, here's the truth. It, ult- ultimately, it doesn't matter because they yeah, got it in faster than you guessed yeah, Smash Brothers. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so yeah, it's, it's all good for pride purposes. But Sonic was Sega. Like, <laughs> so Sonic yeah, was but invented. he's been he's been bought. Uh, I'm, I'm, I know that. They, yeah, they added him in later. I think. I was gonna say, yeah, it would have to be uh, more recent if they did. I, don't, I mean, they I very think, well could have. I think he has been. So our our theme might actually work as well. But it wasn't. But first we anyway, weren't so. first anyway, so it doesn't really yes, matter. So that is we correct. don't need to. We don't need to hang right. on that. But uh, yeah. you know. Yeah. For this game, it makes sense that there could have been a second answer. And, you know, David's just <laughs> having an off day today. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> totally. All right. After the second quarter, Beefy Taco is at 260 points, buoyed by the 100 points they got for getting in the missing link faster. And Exponentially Bad at This is at 230. So still anyone's game as we head into halftime. It is now time for the Halftime Show. There will be three entertainment questions pertaining to sports, with each question worth 25 points. All right. Halftime, it's time for more Pitch Perfect style pre and post games. And after this, I'm retiring this. But I figured with Scott on and especially with Josh on. We're gonna tr- we're gonna see if we can, we can we can see if we can hit the pattern of getting at least one eye roll from Josh for this. So for Matt's sake, the way this works is it will be pre and post game style, but they will not overlap except for the fact that there's a middle section that can be made from the first answer combined with the second. There'll be a TV show. So the example I've given in the past is 1980s Atlanta Braves outfielder who won consecutive MVPs in '82 and '83. And Ivy League school that graduated Joe Paterno, Bill O'Brien, and Steve Jordan. The answer would be Dale Murphy, Brown University, where Murphy Brown is the middle section. So real, I love this halftime. So, so real see, quick. there you go. Question number one. This is computed by dividing number of hits by official at-bats. And despite the fact that, that Ted Williams had a 406 one in 1941, he would lose the MVP to this rival who set one of the most famous baseball, baseball records in the same year. We're checked in. Wow. All right. Beefy Taco has checked in. Exponentially bad at this is still parsing the question, but they will have a chance to talk it out once they do. So batting average for the first part? I think so, but right? isn't oh, that and... also the... Okay, batting average... Oh, average. Batting average Joe DiMaggio. Average Joe it was a, a reality TV show. Oh, that's why I don't know. So batting average Joe DiMaggio. Check that in. Okay. All right. And Beefy Taco, what did you have? Uh, Yeah. Well, I mean, I prefer Vince DiMaggio, of course. And I also prefer Joe Millionaire if if we're doing reality shows with Joe in the title. But we also (laughs) checked in with batting average Joe DiMaggio. That is correct. And there's a there's a more recent average Joe with uh, uh, what's that guy? He was in Blackish. Dean Cole. Um, oh I, yeah. yeah forgot so, about that Dion yeah. Cole yeah sorry what did I say I'm oh, not Dean Dion yeah sorry yeah. sorry yes um 
Okay, well, good Dean job, everybody. Dean Cole. Dean Cole. Cole. <laughs> rat, rat, rat Packer from back in the day. <laughs> yeah, that's Cole. right. Perfect. So <laughs> the correct answer was batting average Joe DiMaggio, yes. And I still find it criminal that Ted Williams would hit 406. And obviously, Joe DiMaggio had a 56-game hitting streak. But it was only two months, for Pete's sake. So anyway, question number two. Either one of two Ukrainian brothers who became world heavyweight boxing champions and called the greatest linebacker of his time the starting middle linebacker for four Steel Curtain Steelers Super Bowls. I see what you did. <laughs> We're checked in. All right. All right. Beefy Taco has checked in. Exponentially okay. bad at this. Talking out again. The second half, I think, is Jack Ham. Mm-hmm. I... Mm-hmm. No? Um, I thought the the Ukrainian boxers were the Klitschkos. Oh, my God. Kojak. If you put the two together, oh. in the middle is Kojak. Oh, my God. I roll. Cue the eye roll. Because I, <gasps> I, no, I would support right, it. Right, right. That's, that's, I forgot how I this thing works. I don't support it. <laughs> so, I have to, we have to give you one of the first names? Is that what you're wanting? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Vladimir you know Klitschko... Jack Ham, Kojak. Yeah, I forgot how this game works. It's not it's not a actual pre and post. It sort of yeah. squishes together with a TV show in the middle. Ugh. All right. Yep. All right. Thanks, Mason, for saving us on that one. That's, uh, and bro- beefy beefy taco. There's nothing else to say. They 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 said everything that I'm also feeling. Uh we checked in with the same answer. <laughs> so actually, sadly, neither team will be well, well, points. Oh. Oh, oh, if you're if you're getting technical on that, um, we checked in with Vitaly, but it's the same answer. Well, neither team will be getting points anyway. Then what? Um, Jack Ham was an outside linebacker. The correct answer is Vladimir Jack. or Vitaly Klitschko, Jack Lambert. Lambert. Oh, oh, oh. that's the Very linebacker. Sorry, people, that's the. But problem, if you go back right? and watch, it was Jack Lambert who was the yeah, most sure. unbelievable middle linebacker. I'm not uh, going to go back and watch. <laughs> well, he was unbelievable. Well, but we did say okay. starting middle linebacker. At you least, both missed it. We, you yeah, both missed say, it. We both so it's all good. Hey, it's yeah, all yeah. good. I was like, did I mispronounce his first name? Oh, well, I know. Like, like, does, 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 does he not want Vladimir? Because technically, no, <laughs> I was not. <laughs> I wasn't going to give the you, third one. You no points. One. No points off for mispronouncing Ukrainian names. Oh. Absolutely not. All right, this is the one that might give, give you the eye roll. It wasn't even the last one. It usually okay. is the third. It's always the oh, third. Question three. Traditionally, the batter who is next up to bat, he or she actually is meant to stand in a five-foot diameter circle with the same name, and the last Green Bay Packer to lead the NFL in receptions for a season. Yes, that's uh, it. All right, we're wow. checking in. All right, Beefy Taco has checked in. We got a recurring theme here. Exponentially bad at this. Please talk it out. These guys are going to murder you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... Any shows that start with deck? I don't, I don't know. I mean, I can name a bunch of Packer receivers, but I don't think either of them led. Yeah, I don't think Adams or Nelson. Right. The... I was just thinking because Devonte was such a, a target hog. Yeah. Yeah. But I I feel like this is gonna go back. So are we going back to like a Antonio Freeman? Antonio Freeman. I was thinking him. Oh, I'm trying to think yeah, of what the deck Antonio this... is not a show that I'm familiar with. <laughs> So you just beat people up named Antonio. Deck um, Ant? Is that is that a is that a is that a TV show? Like a decanter? Okay. Okay. Other, okay, so who else? Deck Ant is a dating show on a boat featuring only ants. <laughs> how far how far does this go? I think Antonio Freeman did lead the league in receptions. So receptions, what right? Show, yeah, so what show is this? Deck I can't Antonio. Stop laughing at <laughs> We just what? punch people named Antonio. <laughs> I mean, I don't. It's such a common name, too. So many people are going to get punched. Big Dice, <laughs> Gates. Yeah. And... Brown. Brown, for sure, could be on there. Just, just. Is there a show that's just for, called. Watch out for Ben Darius Jr. Can't? Mm-hmm. Can't. I can't Ant. come up with the name of it. <laughs> I mean, we don't have to know what the show is. But I feel we like it would help to, re- to make it confirm our answer here. Okay, is there anybody else? Like, this is not going to go back to like you know James Lofton or somebody. This is not going to go that far back, is it? No, no. I, I don't think in the late nineties. I'm almost certain Antonio Freeman led the league in receptions one of those years. Yeah. Uh, but I have no idea what the I 
it's going to be something that I'm going to roll my eyes at. I can't even figure out what it is. <laughs> right. That's the thing. Deck Antonio. That doesn't even. I, <sighs> we're going to find out what it is, but I think this is the answer. I just don't know what the show is that that Scott's going to tell us what it is because he already Man, figured out the, is, or Matt is the only show us. I can think of with deck is below deck. And it obviously that doesn't work for various reasons. I, I, I'm fine with it. If that's, if you're confident on that I'm, part. I'm almost certain on that. And I can't think of anybody after Antonio Freeman who actually did lead the league in receptions for green Bay. You know, okay. it, it's my division. I pay attention to, especially the Packers and fortunately, and that was, you know, during a long, long stretch that they were pretty darn good, but okay. all right, I I trust you. I, I have no things. idea what the show is, but we're gonna yeah. check in with on deck Antonio Freeman. Okay, and beefy tacos, Matt. Can you? Unless I'm uh, wrong, I guess I could it, be wrong. I'm yeah, I think it's actually best. I think it's actually best to just say the answer and then let the middle part sink in. I'm not even going to listen to it. I'm not going to get the full. <laughs> uh, so we checked in with on deck Sterling Sharp. Oh, okay. One yeah. team will be receiving points. Dexter. Right. Okay. Oh, you know what? I bet I'm thinking yards. Not it was it was yards in '98. Damn it, for Freeman. Yep. I I, was... I believe that's exactly what's going on. Sterling Sharp was the last Packer to do it, and he led. I don't know, three out of five years or something. He actually uh, led the league in. Damn it. If I would have actually gotten to Dexter and I actually watched that show, but that's actually not an eye roll. I just didn't, I couldn't come up with like just deck wasn't getting me to Dex. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's a, know. it's a great, it's a great little linguistic thing in the middle where it, it like works the great. CK and I just, then the ST and somehow but they combine when to not the necessarily the having them. Yeah. Right. So no, like, none of those really get an eye roll. Well, I mean, average Joe that calling that an actual TV show is <laughs> disingenuous. Uh, no, 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 no. But no, the more the wait, the more recent. He was going episode. off the recent one. Not he was right. going off the Dean Cole. With show. Dean Cole, yeah, yeah. with yeah. Dean exactly. Oh, is that a, is that a legit yes. show? Yes, yes, that's what I was saying. I didn't make it that is. Up. It's yes. a legit show. I've never heard yes. of. Again? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. But I watch a lot of TV. If I haven't I th- heard of it, it's probably I don't. trash. I okay. think you were going to get it when Scott dropped you the major hint because at some point he said that. Or did you? I assume you did that on what? purpose. You did, Scott, right? You said what? No. What, what they said when they hear the answer, they're going to murder you. And I was like, oh, "What are well, you I, doing?" I just said that because I when when I figured when we figured oh. it out, I didn't catch okay. that. Until I wasn't. Right now. I wasn't. Oh, very good, I wasn't though. trying to fish for clues because I was trying to figure out how yeah, yeah. decant. Which maybe <laughs> that is a whiskey show, right? <laughs> like they're, they're, that's Josh, really awesome. Watch, or a wine a lo- show. Like you can decant a bunch of things. That's you true. You watch a lot of TV, Josh. I want to know if you would watch Deck Antonio. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, which Antonio? <laughs> I, well, no, I think it's what Mason's premise, where it's random Antonios. I, they yeah, just come on right off the top of somebody it. just I, punches the hell out of them. What if yeah. we, each, each week is a different? Antonio, or it's just like a lineup of guys, and you have to pick the Antonio yeah, and that deck, the right one. That's the right one. Yeah, I mean, or maybe maybe each week a different like guy does the punching too, right? Like one week it's Mike Tyson, the next week it's you know one of the Klitschko brothers. We don't want to kill these people, do we? <laughs> no, wait, it depends on the Antonio. I mean, hold on, hold on. Hold on. What do you? If we to say this to too on? loud, Jake Paul will get this idea yeah. and actually make it happen. <laughs> but here's my question, Matt. What what do you have to be to be one of the decoys on that show? Right. I mean, it's like think, Mike Tyson just comes out and clumps some guys. And says, Sorry, he just knocked out some guys. It's not even Antonio. He they just made a the whole, they, there's a whole sport around slap fighting. I know. I sign up for that. that all, all, People will sign up decoys, for that. All the decoys are Antoine's and or Anthony. <laughs> or Anthony's. Exactly. Yeah, I, I think all right. The, I think the, just gets knocked out. I think that whole slap thing is just called uh, premature CTE, right? Because oh, you ever seen sure. their heads oh. when they get hit? And when they show them in slow motion, they are just it's, getting the, they're getting knocked yeah, out. Yeah, and that means their brain is going yes. quack, 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 yes, quack, yes, quack, yes, in yes. their head. Yes, absolutely, no question. Stupid. All right, so we've come to the end of halftime, thankfully, and our halftime at post halftime score, Beefy Taco now has three hundred and ten points, still in it, exponentially bad at this, two hundred fifty five. We'd like to take a minute to invite you to follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter at BenchwarmersTP. We also have a Facebook group for fans of the pod called The Bench. Join us there to comment on the latest episodes and share cool sports facts and trivia. 
if you'd be willing to rate and review us on iTunes or Stitcher, we'd greatly appreciate the support so that other people may find this podcast. Thanks. Our third quarter will be today, five on three. Five on three. For this quarter, there will be three categorized lists containing five items where each item is worth 10 points. The teams will attempt to guess as many items as they can. However, if a team has an incorrect guess, they will receive zero points for that list. Question number one, or list number one of five on three. I'm looking for the five major league players who hit at least 100 home runs with three different teams. Yeah, we'll check in our 13 answers for this. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Exponentially Bad at this has decided to check in, <clears throat> which means that Beefy Taco, for the first time in a while, will get to talk this out. You have less than a minute. So yep. make it All right. Okay. All right. So I think we we definitely think A-Rod, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I I like McGriff. Is it? I don't know if it's... Padres or Blue Jays or Ray, like what combination, but right. I know Braves for sure for him. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I like, I like Jim Tomey with what Indians, White Sox, uh, Phillies. I definitely Indians and Phillies for sure. White yeah. Sox. I'm a little nervous about because it was towards the end, but he was, yeah. he was there for, he was, and he was still hitting home runs. Um, and then of some of the other guys, like Adam Dunn is a guy mm-hmm. again, like reds, diamondbacks, Possibly White Sox. Um, you mentioned Eddie Murray. That's another guy. You mentioned Sheffield. I'm always going to mention Sheffield, and this is actually oh, yeah. something that's that. The problem is, it's that Dodgers to Braves in the late '90s, early 2000s. Right. I don't know that he stayed with the Dodgers long enough to get to get to 100 with them. Uh, Marlins mm-hmm. for sure, and mm-hmm. Yankees. And Yankees. We can do a Rod McGriff, Tommy. I brought up Carlos Lee just because uh, he like I hosted and I had a question about him and he played, he had over 400 homers and Mm -hmm. he played for three different teams. Richie Sexton is a guy, but I think he would only done it for two teams. Right. All right. Let's get some answers. Um, I like those three. I mean, I, I, yeah, we have a lead. Yeah. So I think we can play more conservatively, right? Yeah. I think so. You want to do a Rod McGriff and Tommy? Yeah. That sounds good. All right, David, A-Rod, Fred McGriff, Jim Tolman. And we're exponentially bad at this. Well, uh, Mason was pretty quick to come with A-Rod. And, yeah, I think that's I think he's an, an easy definite. Um, I think Jim Tomey would have done it for the White Sox, Phillies, and Indians, right? Mason also uh, brought up a uh, older ball player by the name of Reggie Jackson, that, oh, cool. we did too. Um, yeah. that I that I actually feel pretty confident in. Uh, I, had to, I had to think for a bit on the Angels side of it, but I think he played like five or six years with them. So mm. I think he had to have averaged, you know, 20 home runs with them. So, and then um, somewhere along the way, I remember reading a while back, you know, obviously he's not playing anymore right now, but uh, Adrian Beltre. Oh, um, oh I, didn't, I didn't think he maybe uh, would have got there with Boston. Interesting. So, good answer. So we're checking in with those four, A-Rod, Jim Tomey, Reggie Jackson, and um, and Adrian Beltre. One team will be receiving points. And I will say up front that there was one, in my eyes, trap answer and one answer that I wasn't expecting anyone to get. And sure enough, one team had a trap answer, said the trap answer, and neither team said the answer that I wasn't mm-hmm. expecting anyone to get. So let's, let's go over what we had. So both teams had A-Rod, and that is correct, the Mariners, the Rangers, and the Yankees. Both teams had Jim Tomei, the Indians slash Guardians, the Phillies, and the White Sox. The other three were Adrian Beltre, the Rangers, the Mariners, and the Dodgers. Oh, man. Reggie Jackson, who um, easily made it. Um, your breakdown was exactly right, uh, Josh. He was It was the A's, Yankees, and the Angels. And, of course, he was with the Angels when he tried to kill the Queen. Mm-hmm. So, right? <laughs> it's very important. And the last one is an older school guy that I, of course, remember that bounced around a lot and never looked like a, I mean, he looked like an old school kind of softball player to me. And that is Daryl Evans, not to be confused with Um, Dwight Evans, not, not Dwight Evans, who was the right fielder forever with the Red Sox, but Daryl Evans, who played with the Braves, the Tigers and the Giants. I, so, yeah, I wouldn't yeah. have. I don't think I would have put him in the the three teams with a hundred like that. Okay. 
Yeah. All right. So well done. Well done to both teams. Fred McGriff was really close. I think his problem was he bounced around a little bit too much. Mm-hmm. Uh, he had so many home runs with so many different teams. I think he had two and he was really, oh, really he, close. With he, he definitely had two. With two. With the he, he Blue definitely Jays had two. and the Braves. 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 Exactly. That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. So well done. So that's actually 40 points for exponentially bad at this, so who are tightening the game now. Uh, and we move on to list number two. Of all quarterbacks in NFL history with at least 200 starts, the five quarterbacks with the highest winning percentage. All right, we'll we'll check in. All right, exponentially bad at this has checked in. Beefy Taco, you got about 30 seconds. Who are we most comfortable with? I think um, I think Peyton Manning. I feel really good about mm-hmm. Brady. Brady. We we have so many names. Like Wisconsin. I feel good about Montana just because they, mm-hmm. they, his team's never lost. But yeah, the two hundred yeah. starts. It's it's is, is something close, to think about. I feel like just Roger Rogers should have two. He's got to have two hundred starts right now, even with the injuries, right? He, I would think so. Well, well, no, actually, maybe not though, because from he didn't start until what, like two thousand eight. Eight, I think. Oh, eight or oh, and nine. and if we're so we're looking at, I don't. He might not. He maybe we leave him off so because what, thirteen seasons, right? But like he's that? missed four games here, six games right. there. Right. Maybe yeah, we leave not, him off. So not. Brady Manning, um, maybe we leave off Rogers. So Brady Manning, Montana. Who else do we throw out? Bradshaw. Cal- Bradshaw, Jim Kelly, uh, Favre, Breeze. But I think the Chargers years, even though they won, like they were good. I don't know that. Do we just go the three? Manning, Brady, Montana. Hopefully yeah. put some points on the board. Yeah, let's let's do that. All right, David. Uh Joe Montana, Peyton Manning, Tom Brady. Okay. And over to this is exponentially hard for us. Or we're especially bad at this. Sorry. Came up with a few names right off the bat. I came up with Brady and Peyton Manning. I feel like those are locks. Um, Josh came with Aaron Rodgers, and I think he does have enough because we're looking at like 14, 15 seasons, and you know that's 240 games. So even if you miss some time, I feel like there's enough that he could he could fit in there. And I came up with one because he never had a losing season during his career. We went with Big Ben as our fourth because mm. he he had the longevity for it. Um, and I'll let Josh take the last one because this was this was his, and I would not have come up with this one. I'm not super confident, but like I said, we're either gonna uh, we'll either get points or we'll live up to our team name. So um, I thought, what's uh, what's a quarterback who was very successful in regular seasons? And I thought, well, somebody who going back a little bit before some of the names we were talking about uh, went to uh, a number of Super Bowls in the '80s, lost them all, but then went to back to back Super Bowls. One on his way out. We're putting John Elway as our fifth. So can you recap your names then? I, I, I missed um, that in the discussion. Brady, Peyton Manning, Aaron Rodgers, Big Ben, and John Elway. So one team is receiving points. This was also pretty hard. I mean, the the, the cutoff yeah. of the... I know it's hard to gauge because 200... But 200 starts is kind of a key cutoff. There are only about 100 guys in NFL history who have had 200 starts and that's across all positions. So if you sort of factor in oh. kickers and offensive linemen and all that, there are really not that many guys who've had 200 starts. Obviously quarterbacks live a little bit longer in the league than other positions, but you're never going to get a running back, for example, with 200 starts, unless you're, I don't know, Emmett Smith or somebody. So in order, the top five are Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, Ben Roethlisberger, Aaron Rodgers. And John Elway. Wow. I don't think One I don't think Montana is even that close to no here. Montana is, I think, pretty far below 200 starts. Otherwise, he might have made it, or he may he may be in the 180, 190. Maybe he's close, mm. but I he was definitely not his score wasn't that long. But anyway, so that's 50 points for exponentially bad at this. And beefy taco, another goose egg, sadly. But I have a funny feeling that this one is going to be more in the wheelhouse of Beefy Taco. So our list number three. Oh, wrestling crap. <laughs> no, no, no. No, quite, not quite that bad. Although that oh, would be awesome. Not, I'm, gonna, I'm, uh... I'm looking for the top five total scorers in NBA in the NBA playoffs this year, this past Ooh. season. And that's in terms of total points, not in points per game. Total points, top five total scorers. Projected. All right. 
Uh, Beefy Taco has checked in exponentially bad at this. Two minutes to talk it out. It's going to figure out which of these names we like out of this group. Correct. I, I think you're, I mean, Jokic and Butler, I think, are givens. I think they're absolutely. I'm almost certain Jamal Murray because he went off. He did. He did. So uh, just sheer number of games played. Yeah. Making it that far. I feel like he's going to have to be up there. And then that's where I went to the Celtics after this, just because I because they went seven against the Heat. Right. I don't remember what some of their earlier rounds were, but I don't think they I don't think they did any like sweeping of anybody. I thought they kind of had to fight throughout. I can't remember yeah. offhand. I think so. Um, so I think they had a good number of games played. So that's where I was thinking Tatum, and then you even said Brown, Jalen Brown, which the, those were their two scores. I mean, it, yeah. Um. The only other name I have, just again, sheer number of games played, is Bam Adebayo, but he wasn't really scoring well. I I feel like the other names we have are much more prolific, even even more so than them. Yeah, uh, Bam obviously, you know, for number of games, right? Right. I'd I'd be doubtful if it's anybody else, just because. Yeah, I just don't think like, there are enough games number, for right, even in the Western Conference, space. right, for other. For other teams i mean i wouldn't be surprised if you know someone like a steph curry were on the I, list but not high enough to be just yeah, because of the number of points he i scored. don't think he had but, enough games to probably right that's, the, that's what i'm saying like it, the other people that are there for the west is just not enough games right played. yeah i mean like you think curry or lebron but They're once again just there, not, not enough not, just not no. enough games to get him there all right um, let's hear you put your list together right. i need an answer all right so how many do we want to go with here so the question is, do we think both Tatum and Brown would have made the top five? Because I think I feel really good with Jokic, Butler, and Murray for sure. And I, I think Tatum above Brown. Right. Oh, for sure. I would take Tatum over Brown. So the question is, do we think Brown or do we think Bam might have been ahead of Brown? Yeah, that's. I don't I don't really have a strong feeling. I'm no. fine if you want to go with the fifth or if we just go with the four. I think we take the four. Okay. Putting the fifth, taking a risk, getting a zero here, and they that is they true. That lead. We feel pretty good about forty points for sure. So uh, yeah, I would. I think we, we play it safe and just take the yep. four, and it's not worth the extra ten. I don't think. Okay. So we'll go with Jokic, Butler, Murray, and Tatum as our four. Okay. And BP Taco, what did you check in with? We had a basically the same conversation and ended up locking in with the same four answers, Butler, Jokic, Murray, and Tatum. Upstanding citizen, Jimmy Butler. Don't get Josh Cancer, locker room cancer, (laughs) Jimmy Butler, what? Jamal Murray did not go off. Jamal Murray, Jamal Murray, because that's what he does in the playoffs. (laughs) so Uh, So both teams are receiving points and got the top four answers. I, I heard some discussion, I believe, of all the top seven anyway. So yeah. it was Jokic was number one, Jimmy Butler, number two, Jason Tatum, number three, Jamal Murray, number four, Jalen Brown was number five, okay. Bam Adebayo was number six, Steph yeah. Curry was number seven, <laughs> and then it goes LeBron, Devin Booker, Anthony Davis. Right, so that's right. 40 points for both teams. And so that brings us to the end of the third quarter where we have a lead change, exponentially bad at this not living up to their name at the moment, is at 385 points. Now with a small lead over Beefy Taco, who has 350 350 points. So a 35-point lead. And that will bring us to the fourth quarter. The fourth quarter, known as Put Your Fours Up. This quarter consists of four categorized questions that teams will wager up to 100 points each not to exceed their current point total. Our fourth quarter theme, for no particular reason, is Janet Jackson songs. Question number one, what have you done for me lately? Question number two, anytime, any place. Question number three, come on, get up. And question number four, go deep. So what have you done for me lately will be Super Bowl history. Anytime, any place will be Major League Baseball. Come on, get up will be sports inventions. And go deep will be NFL quarterbacks. It is now time for the teams to place their wagers. Now that the wagers are in, on to the questions. Question number one of our fourth quarter. What have you done for me lately? He 
is the current head coach of the UAB Blazers, but is also the only Super Bowl winning quarterback to be released in the offseason following a Super Bowl win. All right, we'll check in. We are exponentially bad at this. Checked in, which means Beefy Taco now has two minutes to talk this out. All right, Mm. so he's a current head coach in college, so he's not active, so it's not Nick Foles. I mean, it's assumed this is someone that maybe wasn't, it either wasn't that good or right. maybe had some sort of injury or, right. you know, an extenuating circumstance. The first, um, the first two names that popped into my head are like very far apart time-wise, but Doug Williams and Trent Dilfer. I think Doug Williams coaches at an HBCU or something, maybe. Okay. I think maybe I remember, I don't think it's you. I don't like, I don't think he coaches at UAB. Um, and then who'd you say, Dilfer? Dilfer. I don't know if he is either because I I think he's still doing analysis. Okay. Which like again, it doesn't disqualify you, but it's not. I right. don't really see that often. Um, what uh, about um, Brad Johnson? Dil- yeah, Jack, it definitely could be Dilfer. Neil O'Donnell. I, I don't know what he's doing. Did Neil O'Donnell win a Super Bowl? Didn't he? No. They lost, they lost. right? Yeah. They lost. The yeah, I, man. Uh, I. It's either going to be probably one of these guys we mentioned, or it's going to like go back because right. a- anything recent, I you know I think we'd know, and then the other guys that have won are sure. still around. I I don't I don't really have a I don't have strong convictions one way or the other. I don't either. I'm trying to th- the UAB of it all. I'm trying to think if you know mm-hmm. did one of these guys go to school there or at least go to school maybe in the area. But mm. again, I don't. I mean. I, or if Doug Williams was coaching it in HBCU, did true, he, he could. Did he get yeah. the UAB job, and we didn't know. Right? That. Why would he have gotten released? Did they? What change did they make? Did they go to Ripon right after mm-hmm. that? Let's go. Yeah, since we don't, let's go Doug Williams. Okay. Why not? For seventy-five points. All right, and we're exponentially bad at this. I actually knew this from the UAB part because I remember him becoming a coach there and it kind of made sense that he would be the only Super Bowl winning quarterback to be released in the offseason um, so we went with Trent Dilfer for 100. One team is receiving points. You guys were so close. I was so <laughs> hoping you stopped when Matt initially threw that out. It is Trent Dilfer. He he of course he got released uh, by the Ravens uh, and then went on you know eventually retired went on his brief career in ESPN and I don't know why it wasn't on my radar that he was seemingly out of nowhere just named the coach for UAB. I don't think he went to UAB. Yeah, I mean, good for him. Yeah, and Doug Williams is – I don't think Doug Williams is coaching anymore, but he was a coach at Grambling. I think you remember that. That came up in a game not that long ago. Trent Dilfer, also interesting fact. I was going to throw all this together, the fact that he's at UAB, the fact that he was released after winning the Super Bowl, and the fact I'm about to give you and was going to turn it into a flop-turned river. But he's also thought to be the only quarterback to be thrown out of a game for fighting. So, you know, oh, kind no. of kind of makes sense. <laughs> oh, Wait, oh, anyway. Could that possibly be true? You're saying some of those old school quarterbacks didn't get wow. in fights and get thrown out? No, uh, they, just, they got in fights. They just didn't throw them out. Oh, okay. yeah. Just let them Maybe that's point. what it is. Good exactly. Point. They just yeah. brought them to the sidelines. They, they, just... they only carried one QB. They were like, well, well, that's uh... why that's why I also said thought to be a lot of the, a lot of the stories around this. I mean, he was definitely thrown for fighting and he's the first one, certainly and the only one for a very long time. Yeah. But kind of like how they didn't track steals in the NBA. It's not like they have records of every Injections. single quarterback in the 50s oh. and 60s who got thrown out for fighting. So he also cost anyway. me a lucky seven. Uh, and, he, and he also just cost you 75 points. So, he all did. right, let's go on to question number two. This is a bit of a David question, so bear with me. Okay. Uh, There's one major league team who recently set a record by going more than two years without sweeping a series before, before finally sweeping one this month. Meanwhile, another major league team has the longest active streak of not being swept in a series in a streak that dates back to last May. 2022 both are in an eastern division and i want you to name both we'll check in beefy taco has checked in exponentially bad at this you have about 30 seconds i'm i'm almost 100 certain the first one's the nationals because i remember that and they've been pretty bad just from kind of process of elimination i'm thinking it's got to be the orioles um, i'm good with that because the rays and yankees have been struggling I'm pretty sure I'm pretty I'm pretty sure I remember the Rays getting swept. I don't remember who it was, but I because they've been pretty bad since the beginning of the year. Red Sox been bouncing around 500, as you said. Blue Jays kind of in the same ballpark ish. Yeah, Orioles have been hot this year. They were pretty decent at the end of last year. 
and that fits about the time frame of that. So if you're good with that, I think, I think that's I'm good with it. Headed. I say go with it. All right, we're gonna go Nationals and Orioles for 100. Okay, and BP Tacos. We did a lot of uh, no facts, just vibes uh, in the chat <laughs> um, of like what what feels spiritually right, like they never got swept or they never swept anybody. And we kind of game theoried it a little bit, thinking that if they or if uh, they were both in the same division, then David would have written the question that way. Um, so we just <laughs> picked it, picked an AL East team and an NL East team, and we went Orioles Braves. One team will be receiving points. It's actually the Orioles and the Nationals. I was actually going to write this question slightly differently. Uh, rather than saying they're both in Eastern teams, I was going to just say the teams are within 100 miles of each other. And then that, watch, that's why, again, watch, I thought maybe you would watch this scramble of yeah. like, yeah, so watch the scramble of people thinking, was it the Mets and the Yankees? Is it the Giants and the and the yeah. uh, the A's? The, you know, the Dodgers and the Angels? Because because it's amazing how a lot of these pairings, one of them is up and one of them is down. The Nationals and Orioles are clearly team two teams that are pretty close to each other that have been going in opposite directions. It wasn't that long ago that the Nationals won the World Series, obviously. They, until recently sweeping the San Francisco Giants, I believe, they had not won a series in two years. And the Orioles, meanwhile, have uh, an, an active streak that goes pretty far back. I think it's like the fifth longest streak in history in terms of not being swept. And they kept it going even this weekend as we record this. They just beat the Yankees tonight. So although they think they beat the Yankees on Friday. But anyway, yeah, they haven't lost a series in, uh, I don't remember what the number was exactly, but it's been it's been a while. So our correct answers were the Nationals and the Orioles. Well Real done. Oh, yeah. How many points ahead. did you guys wager on that one? A hundred. hundred. So we won't talk about our scores. Uh, we will just go happily on to question three. Category is come on, get up. Originally invented by Edward Stimson in 1936, the stimp meter was not widely used until the late 70s, but now is widely used all over the country. For what sport was the stimp meter invented? We'll we'll check in. We'll get the ball rolling. All right. Beefy Taco has rolling. checked in. Exponentially bad at this. You have about 30 seconds. I was using nonsense of trying to come up with, come on, get up. And it was just like the get up was, I was thinking about like, you know, uh, you're make a shot to the green. You're, you're looking for it to get up, get up, get to get out of the green right. uh, or come on, get in the hole. This is ridiculous. These are just right. words I'm looking at. Yeah. Right. Yeah. To be honest, the thing you said was the first thing that came to my mind, but yeah, I just don't I, know I, if it has a name. Right. I don't think, I don't know if they were doing the NFL combine in the 1930s, but I'm, you know, that vertical jump thing. I'm pretty sure they weren't se- doing a, a right. combine in the seventies in the seventies. I, I don't know, know when this were they combine, doing started. A combine in the seventies. Probably not. I don't know when they started the combine, but I mean like that one makes more sense, but all over the country, you're not using that. Right. That's the, it says all over the country. Oh. So that, I just noticed that. So probably not. You're not having the NFL combine. <laughs> vertical jump. So. No. Well, but I that mean, makes that makes your answer more make more sense because there are golf courses all around. There, the that is true. There are golf courses all over the country. I right. have no idea. Like I said, I was just parsing words that we were told not to. That's right. <laughs> I'm, all right. I'm fine. With I'm going to I'm going to need an answer. I'm fine with it. I don't know. I'm fine uh, with going with golf? golf. I don't know. Sure. I, I doubt it's my answer. So, I'm, OK, uh, yours so at least makes go. more sense. We're going to check in with golf. Who? OK, sounds good for and beefy. Sorry. Okay, no, 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 sorry. No, 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 no uh, 100. One team is receiving points. The stimp meter is a device that is used to measure the slope on green. No. Yes, it uh, is. What? <laughs> no. Yes. You can look it up. I did not make this up. It's literally this weird kind of rampy device, and they use it to like, they seemingly to roll a ball, and then that figures out the slope on the greens. But... Yes. Why would they said, I, they I, said 16, right? Not 100? 16. They said 16. <laughs> 16. They said 16. 16. <laughs> I, I don't want more than 16 points right. for that. That's wow. ridiculous. 
hey, look, I tried to write a Jeopardy question. This is what happens. Hey, I parsed the language that you told us not to, and apparently and it worked. got and to it the right worked. answer. I know. I tried to get you off of that, but yes, yes. Okay. All right. David Let's can't get off on. of stuff, though. That's the it's thing. true. Question number four, go deep. In the history of the NFL, there have been 217 4,000-yard passing seasons. Only two franchises have had five unique quarterbacks make the list. I want you to name either franchise. I'll give you a hint. Both of the franchise's current quarterbacks are one of the five. We are going to check in. Oh, boy. All right. Beefy Tacos has checked in. And exponentially bad at this. I'll give you about a minute to talk this out. Well, we keep getting stuck at a bunch of fours. Yeah. Like right off the head, right at the top, I was like, the Vikings maybe got there. And I came up because I was trying to think of current ones, right? Obviously, if a current, right. so Cousins definitely has. And I was like, okay, Cole Pepper. I know Favre did and Moon did, but I don't think anyone else did. I don't think Fran got to 4,000 back in the day. I don't think Tommy uh, Kramer got to 4,000. So, no. But I think Rams, we might, that might be the best bet. Right. We just have to hope Mark Bolger got there. I mean, he had that one really great season. Yeah. And he was playing um, with all of the wasn't it weren't all the greatest show on turf wide receivers still pretty much there? I'm pretty much yeah, I think so. The time frame works. So and then Stafford, Goff, Warner, and Everett, Everett. probably out there. I, he, I'm pretty sure he's the all time leading passer for the Rams, so I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So I, I yeah, but we couldn't come up with a fifth. We felt confident in from for the Broncos. Well, Russell, and I Russ, don't know. If I don't Russell think got did 4K. right. I, should we just go Rams? I I and think we have five names yeah. that make sense. Paul, and yeah, I think at this names. point, it really doesn't matter if we get it right or wrong. So, you know. Okay. Right. We're going to check in with the 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 Rams franchise that has traveled a bit for 100. And Beefy Taco? Yeah, we did. We had a lot of the same conversation. We kicked around the Chargers, possibly. We kicked around the Lions, possibly. But um, ultimately, we also checked in with the Rams franchise. And we are hedging our bets on Sam Bradford instead of Jim Everett. Yes. All right. Well, I'll break this down for you. First of all, let's let's kill the suspense. Both teams will be receiving points. The Rams are one of the correct answers. I tr- I tried to put in the... It, it it's a very small hint at this point to say that that teams one of the four thousand yard uh, passing seasons for a given team that their quarterback is still there because everybody I mean it's like so common for people to throw for four thousand yards it's not even yeah. a thing anymore but the Rams going backwards chronologically it would be Stafford before that it was Goff before that Bulger before that Warner and before that Jim Everett okay. so Mason and Josh I'm pretty sure I heard you say it almost almost verbatim so that was really good the other team. I didn't hear anybody mention in conversations, not not when we were officially talking it out and not before then either. But the other answer is the Chiefs. Oh. We, we we dismissed the Chiefs. Yeah, we, we, were, like, we, eh. so, we were like, it boy. can't be the Chiefs. So so amazingly, the, the names get more and more obscure, but it goes obviously Mahomes, right? And then before that, it was Alex Smith. Before that, it was Trent Green. Trent Green got there a few times, actually. Before that, it was Elvis Gerback. And before that, and this is probably a who, even though it was only 1983, it was Bill Kenny. Wow. I don't know if you remember him. I only had his card. I can barely remember him uh, as a player, but it was 1983. Wow. And then it was, you know, to add on to to Scott's age jokes. It's not that I wasn't old enough to remember. I just don't remember this guy that well. I mean, I remember the name, but he was a guy who sort of came out of nowhere, had 4,000 yards and then sort of never did it again. And then he got released. Yeah. (laughs) Right. Exactly. (laughs) For a quick second, I didn't even say it to Mason because I don't think they have more than one or two. If you include the guy who just got traded to the jets, I was like, is he being funny? Does Aaron Rodgers, you know, since he's currently (laughs) on the jets. No, I I, 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 yeah, but I, no I don't one. know if they have more than him. No. The only guy who's done it for the Jets is Joe Namath. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, for them, you know, but you know, yeah. Yeah. That's why now. I worded it the way it did. But I think I think they'll saying, have a second one this season, probably. Oh, I probably probably will. You you had mentioned that there there aren't as many. I didn't get the count. I could I probably should, but there aren't as many fours as you think. Um, they're just hmm. they're not that many teams that have had four guys do it. Minnesota is one of them. Uh, the Chargers? 
Uh, the Chargers. Herbert, Rivers, maybe Fouts. So Rivers, Herbert, and Fouts are the only and three. Maybe. The okay. I didn't where know the Broncos would have got there four? last season. The Broncos, I believe, are at four. So the Broncos they are in a position where they would join the list if Russell Wilson actually got off his yeah, stuff right. and did something. Yeah, because we Elway, were, Manning, um, Cutler, and Plummer. I'm a, Plum, right, Russell? Plummer, Cutler, Elway, yeah. Manning. The other thing that's amazing about, about the Chiefs and, uh, and, and the Rams is that of the list of 200 something, they only have maybe a total of the, the 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 10 guys total that we were talking about for those two teams only did it, I don't know, maybe a total of 15 times. Hmm. Um, obviously, Mahomes is very high on that list, but a number of those guys that we were just rattling off only did it once. Kenny only did it once. Gerbach only did it once. Alex Smith only did it once. Everett only did it once. Bulger only did it once. So oh. Stafford only did yeah. it once or so far. So uh, yeah. anyway, yeah, so there you go. Well huh. done to both teams for pulling that off. So... The game has come to an end, and here are the final scores. Beefy Taco had it going on, but then the taco fell apart. I think it was overstuffed. But they finished with a respectable 150 points. But our clipboard captains of the game who were receiving the coveted Mitch Trubisky Award were exponentially bad at this, who finished with 701 points. Matt, since you are a guest, we'll put you on the spot. Is there anything you would like to enlighten us with before we... Call it a night. I don't know if there's anything I want to enlighten you with, um, but thank you for having me here. It's always a pleasure. Um, Scott, it's great to play with you, even though we, you know, fell apart like a, like a taco show with lacking structural integrity. Um, <laughs> you know, the last game I was here, we lost in a tiebreaker. This one, we definitely didn't get close to a tiebreaker. Um, I'm not sure which one feels worse. <laughs> Hey, but yeah, there's the- only one of us on this podcast right now that can claim to be a Jeopardy champion, and it certainly isn't any bench warmer. For now, you can uh, always take the Jeopardy anytime test. Oh uh, no, I, I guarantee you. Uh, even and, if I, uh, even if somehow I con them into letting me on, pretty sure I wouldn't <laughs> win. <laughs> Just saying. You never listen. And here's the thing about sports trivia people on Jeopardy: is you like have that little extra advantage because the average jeopardy player doesn't know a damn thing about sports. So if a sports category comes up, that's like a free 3000 or $6,000 okay. depending fair, on whether it's fair, jeopardy fair, or double but jeopardy. There's so many categories that yeah. I yeah. won't have answers to that yeah. unless there's multiple sports ones. Um, my, my <laughs> second, my second game, one of the categories was a gymnastics category and I just yeah. immediately pounced on it. I was nice. like, gimme, gimme, gimme. And I think I got four out of five correct in that category. Nice. So Josh, I, I want you to go on Jeopardy because I want to watch you. Who? What? I'll just wear a a BTP t shirt. Like yeah. no, yeah, I'm not getting yeah, dressed up for this. Yeah. <laughs> I, a, a good friend of mine used to talk about how he wanted to go on Jeopardy because the only rule that's stated that we've ever heard is that it has to be phrased in the form of a question. So are you allowed to just go Joe Montana? I mean, that's a question. <laughs> you or, you or, have to add or, some sort of well, like like Matt Imodio, who was on a couple of years ago, would just he would he did what is for everything. He would what right? for everything. So here's Which, another question though. Yeah. This was the other one my friend wanted to try to push the limits on. Could he for every question say Joe Montana, isn't it? Someone they, said I've heard <laughs> isn't before. Yeah, is they tell you they, they tell it. you not to yeah. do that. Oh, one thing that I was to. doing okay. on mine for my I got in the habit of for daily doubles was just saying like what is right at the beginning so i wouldn't forget uh, and it was just like what is and then i would just like pause and think about it and then mm, say the answer yeah. and they still accepted that so well to be clear this is my kind of irreverent friend he was the same guy who wanted to get on the prices right so he could get to the showcase showdown and see if he could spin the wheel up instead of down <laughs> because uh-huh. i'm pretty sure they don't have a rule about that either all right yeah. Well, I think that's probably enough chit chat about game shows. So, so Matt, I want to thank you again for your support for the podcast and for coming on your, your, you have a short time here, but, but always a really fun guest and uh, great to have on super knowledgeable, despite what happened in the fourth quarter, we'll blame Scott till the cows come home. So please don't blame yourself on behalf of our guest, Matt and the bench warmers, Mason, Scott, and Josh. I just want to say thank you for listening to the bench warmers trivia podcast. And until next time, we'll keep the bench warm. Ball hit high and deep. Stretch. Stretch. Get on back there. They look up. You can put it on the ball. Yes. Yes. Into deep left center for Mitchell. And we 
we'll see you tomorrow night. That great music you're listening to is by Justin Nozick. Thanks to him for producing that music for us. You've been listening to the Benchwarmers Trivia Podcast. Make sure to check us out on all of our social media. We are at Benchwarmers TP.